Now, modeling with primitives. This is a modeling technique wherein, the sur wherein surfaces are modeled um, as low resolution proxy objects and then smoothed using an external algorithm. So T-spline primitives are basic geometric figures that can be edited and combined to create more complex models. And there are seven T-spline primitive shapes. There's a box, a plane, a sphere, a cylinder, cone, torus, and something called the quad ball. So if we take a look at the menu in Rhino, we can see that under primitives in T-splines, there are the seven types listed, and here you can see them outlined. So let's bounce over to Rhino and take a look at that right now. I'll make this a little bit easier to see. I'm going to turn my grid off. And we'll go over here to T-splines and drop down from the primitives menu. Now here we can see we have box, plane, sphere, cylinder, cone, torus, and quad ball. So let's grab box. Now if you notice, box has here three point vertical center, right? These are the kind of standard uh, options that you would have if you were using the box command in Rhino. And then you have some additional um, uh, options right here. So let's just click and see what happens. Now I'm going to just drag out, and I'm going to type in four. Interesting. Um, I was in rendered view and it uh, wasn't showing up, so I'm going to go to shaded view and run that command one more time. Sorry about that. I'll go to box. All right. So we can see here that we now have what is called a T-spline primitive box. Now, if I run that command one more time and we change the number of faces, let's say, I don't know, four, four, and four, right, you can see that by increasing the number of faces, we increase the overall fidelity uh, of the uh, object that is created. Let's take a look at that command line one more time. Let's go to primitives, box again, and change the output type this time to box. So if you notice, in T-splines, you have the ability to output in this um, course view, which is a, the, the kind of poly box view, or in a smooth view right here, which is this, you know, just a smoother um, uh, display mode. Now these two objects are the same. Uh, it's just that one's being displayed smooth and the other coarse. <clears throat> so now that we know how to interface with the command line, let's drop down a couple more objects. Take a look at the plane. We'll notice that there are similar um, commands or options how many faces we want, say three and three, for instance. Right. If we were to take a look at the sphere, for instance, uh, I'll just drop this guy in. And I click to specify my radius, and I can change the number of faces, whether or not it's box or smooth. I run that again, and this time I pick smooth. All right, you can see it's going to output smooth, even though the settings are the same. And you can take a look at some of these other ones. Um, I'm going to take a look at the quad ball. So if you notice the quad ball, here at the corner, we have that star point, right? 
So it's still a, a, a you know spherical, um, but it's a special case geometry um, called the quad ball. And I'll delete that guy. Now, the basics of polygonal modeling is that you start with a primitive, and then through a series of operations using that primitive, you begin to develop form or a com more complex uh, shape. So if you look at the top, we have a plane, and if you were to extrude edges around, right, connect them, you could actually you know, fill holes or merge edges, for instance, and that would result in a smooth surface. So on the far right, you have this smooth surface, right, and on the far left, you have a coarse plane. So it's a really interesting way to think about um, geometry and form because what you're doing is starting with really low resolution objects um, and you know almost squinting your eyes, I guess you could say, to be able to uh, imagine the possibilities of that object given um, the uh, T-splines conversion. Now, below if you look at the box, you can see that a box operates uh, in a similar way, you know, through extrusion. But you can extrude it up in this case and extrude, extrude it out um, and then display that as a smooth surface. And right, so again, the principle being that you would start with a very simple primitive uh, and arrive at something much more complex or seemingly more complex, um, just given the fact that T-splines is built uh, to do this for you. So. That view mode is really um, something that allows you to be able to understand the complexity of the form as a smooth object um, while still retaining the edibility and kind of uh, low res um, coarse view um, of the proxy object. So a T-spline's object can be displayed then both as a smooth surface or a box to mesh. And here you can see right the, uh, the edges. Um, here's that uh, corner point here. We have a face, and this is the same object in box mode um, as this object here, which is uh, in smooth mode. So let's take a look at that. Now, we use the command, uh, or rather the menu uh, from here. So let's take a look at our T-splines toolbar. Now, if you notice, we have here create, and if we drag this out, We'll have a, a toolbar with you know, different icons for creating objects, and you can resize it by just dragging around. And if we pull this out, um, the primitives, you'll see that we have access to the various primitives. So let's take a look at um, the box primitive again. Now I've set my output type to box. And I'm going to set my faces to 1, 1, and 1. Starting at the origin, I'm just going to go over 4 units, up 4 units, right? creating this T-splines box. Now, if we go over here to modify, right? if you remember what we were saying, you create then you modify, and sometimes you have to perform utilities. So right here from the modify menu, um, you can see that in the top left there's something called smooth toggle. Now if I click on smooth toggle and I hit enter, you can see that this object right, is now displayed in smooth mode. If I run that again, it's now in box mode. Right? It's the same object, it's just that its display is changing. Right? So this will allow you to also operate um, quicker, uh, you know, with less kind of uh, uh, CPU crunching um, than whenever you're in smooth mode. Um, but it also gives you an opportunity to be able to kind of uh, keep an eye and understand kind of at the low resolution uh, scale, um, you know, or display w what it is that you're trying to achieve. Now, if, for instance, we take a look at this object, and from modify, we use the next little op option over. It's called extrude faces. Let's just click on that and see what happens. Now, if you notice, it says select faces to extrude from the command line. But it also, um, down here, opened up the T-splines edit mode. 
and this is something that you're going to be seeing all the time as you work with T-spline. So now as I mouse around, this starts to highlight right faces, and I could choose a face to work with. So I'll just I'll click on this guy. I hit enter, and it gives me this widget. Now uh, this is sometimes referred to as a gumball. Now as I pull up, you'll see that this face right extrudes up. And if I were to move it to the left, or move it to right along Y, that it's sliding around um, according to the axis that I'm pulling on. Now, if I use these little plates right here, these disks, you can see that I can also rotate the face and have it fixed to a plane. So if I come over here and rotate. It's fixed to, right now, the XZ plane, right? Or here, the XY plane, right? So this gumball, you know, it really does add quite a lot of, um, of really wonderful functionality. Now, let's say I, I want to extrude another face. You know, we can maybe pick this face over here, and we'll just extrude that out. What's fun is I can just keep doing this. All right, and you'll see very quickly you can start to get, um, you know, a lot more faces in here. Now, if I were to go to smooth mode again and I select this object, you'll see that it's converting very, very quickly into a smooth object. So seemingly much, much more complex, right? Um, now, if I go back to coarse mode, I'm reassured that, you know, actually the complexity is not as, as great as I had at thought, right? It's um, very easy to edit, very easy to work with. Now the next thing you might notice is that um, I have right here on the right something called the heads up display. Um, this may or may not be displayed in your viewport currently, so um, if you don't see that, don't worry about it. We're definitely going to turn that on for everybody in just a little bit. But if you notice, whenever that command was running, um, here I have this modifier for face. Over here I have object edge and vertex. And if I change right the selection for what I'm able to edit, if I click on an edge for instance, you can see that you can start to manipulate right the edge or manipulate the face. Right, so it's really nice, very quick to begin to uh, to model with this. Now, you also have vertices, right, which you can see here. So if I move two, that's kind of like moving an edge. So if I just pick one, right, you can see that I'm able to move that vertex. If you hold down shift, you can select more than one, or you could right mouse over to select more than one. Right. And then you can always bounce back to smooth mode. And that's really fantastic because you can see here the control polygon. Right, This is the control cage. And you can very quickly and easily start to, to manipulate the geometry. I go back to my object mode, and I can always X out of here to relieve myself from the edit mode. All right. So this form, right, came from this box. So you can see it's it's very quick to start to develop organic form. Now this is not an articulated piece of geometry, and it's not really even designed for uh, anything except for a quick little exercise in how to extrude. Um, but I'm sure you can get the the sense of how powerful the tool um, really is. <clears throat>